And here we are, um, up towards woodland. This is my little wood pile up here. And uh, I did say I would uh, make a bit of a video about um, using round wood for making rails and, and posts and things like that. And uh, as you know, I haven't been very well lately. I may have to go into hospital. So before I do, I'm going to just make this video to carry it on forward. A little video to show you what I would do or what I do with round wood. Now then, if I use round wood, I've got two axes, two pound and a one and a half pound. Both axes I put in little gloves like that and I can take them off and that protects the, the blade and protects you. And uh, there they are. Now and if you have watched my previous videos or my videos, you will know that I, um, I, uh, let's check that it's in thing. Yeah. That I've, um, use that the saw quite a lot and what I've got here is an example this is a piece of wood and we'll just put uh, put a point on it and uh, and make it as if it is a rail or, or, a, or a pile or a stake if you like and what I'll do I just saw that off there I'll use my uh, my technique of saying that you don't you use the hole of the saw and you you press uh, you don't press you just use all the saw and you don't press so then um, just do that. Just get rid of that little bit. You could use the chainsaw, but what's the point? I mean, um, I would probably have the chainsaw with me normally, but by the time you play around with that, uh, you've done it. So now we can discard that piece. I'll go on as quickly as I can, because you want to get as much information into it as I can. And what we'll do, this is a piece of wood, this is a piece of wood out of the thing. Get a stump like this, and somewhere handy, it's by our wood pile so we can use it. And then you can use that as an anvil then, and you can use the axis, like that. Now I always invariably use gloves, and I can use it without gloves, but uh, I feel quite more comfortable with gloves. So, but we're just giving an example. And when you're using an axe like this, you've got to use a bit of power with an axe. You've got to use a bit of power. You, you can't just do this. You've got to... Otherwise you'll be all day, see? That's what you've got to do. And then as you come to that point and you want to clean it up a bit, you, there's the handle, there's the throat, and there's the head. Uh, and use the handle, but you can go to the throat as you get a bit, bit what you call just for just tidying that up. And there you are. You've got a, you've got a flat on there. See, so I make a rule as you don't use the throat because you throttle the axe, and now I show you how to throttle the axe. But as I say, you generally use the handle and not the throat when you're cutting. Well, when you're just trimming off, you can use the throat just to do that, and you can see you can get a better effect. Now then, um, that's how to put a flat on. If you wanted to put a point on, you just do it the other way. Now let's have a look. Let's give another example. There's a bit of holly here that's about the right size. And here it is. I don't know what, the, oh, the bottom's fairly well. But if you wanted to put a point in there to put it in the ground, you do, you do that. That. Then you do the other side, you get it exactly 180 degrees or opposite, whichever way you want to say. And then you. Now then, I'm not in the best of health. I'm getting on a bit now, 78. So um, I'm not as accurate as I could be. So if, you'll have to bear with me if I'm a little bit. Uh, inaccurate or normally I just chop this up with a couple of those. That's the third side and then you got the fourth side. Whoop. See now 
you've got a, po a point on there, not quite as good as, uh, quite as neat as I want it to be. It's a little turn on the end, so you can just do the, press the end a little bit more. I should leave about a 5mm up square, flat on the end. If you make, put it to a really to a point, then it'll only break off. So you leave about 5mm of flat, or there about a quarter of an inch, depending on where you live. Get a bit fussy now, aren't I? But you see, that's what I mean. About a quarter of an inch on the end of there. Now that's it. Put a bar on the ground, make a hole, get the mole, and punt it in. Now I should have brought the mole to show you, because I made a mole, and I, I would have showed it to you. But that's putting a point on it. That's putting a point on the stake. You can make them longer if you want by coming further up the, up the, uh, you know, and make, if the ground's a bit hard, you can do that. Now, as I say, I have said to you in a previous video that that's a two pound axe. It's a little bit heavy for me now, and my hand gets tired after about a quarter of an hour. But um, here's an older, with a pound and a half axe. And I find that more comfortable because I can work for longer with it. And uh, But I can work with the two pound axe, but you get a little bit inaccurate. And with, with this, you do tend Largely the same effect, but a little bit more comfortable for me. So try a two pound if you find it's too, um, a bit too manly. Get a, a pound and a half axe. That is much older than that one. This is about, oh, 1920, something like that. And that one is about 1940, 1950. You can see the difference. Uh, how it, it's advanced. That's probably better steel than this. There is better steel about now, you can't be high, but that's quite a good serviceable axe. So there we are, so you put a flat on there, or you put a point on there, and as I say on this other piece, we, we put a flat on it, didn't we? Now then that flat can marry against something like that post. You just go to there, give you a rough idea, because all I'm doing is pointing out roughly while you do it, and if that point, post was a little bit bigger, then uh, it would be sufficient to um, say that post was about four inches instead of three, and then you could put that flat against there, and then you could nail it to it, you see, uh, because you got the flat. You see, you got the flat there. I'm just leaning that against there for demonstration purposes. You got the flat, put it to there, that's it. And when you've finished that and you've, got, you've, and you've nailed it in, you can actually put a flat on the post as well if you want. Where are you going to put the, uh, where are you going to put the post? Because that way you've got two flats. So you can just do that. If you don't, if you don't go too deep, it's, it chip, chipples out quite nicely, you see. So there's the flat. And if I was putting up that post, obviously that post wants to be bigger than that because the rail is bigger than the post. And generally speaking, it's the post is bigger than the uh, the post is bigger than the rail. But if it's put on there like that, then what I do, I got a little. Well, you've seen my cradle, and in it, I carry my uh, electric drill. I can pick it up, just drill a hole, and either put a screw in because I've got a. a, a it's a, two, it's a screwdriver as well as a drill. And when you've done that, or put a nail in, and then all you've got to do then is saw off the excess there, and you've got quite a nice joint. As I showed you in a previous uh, video, if you want to run through my videos, about when I was putting post and rail up on a bridge, and you will get, that's an example of how I done it. Now then, when you come to putting it from a post to a post, that's a second post, what you do is you put it there, and we shorten this considerably. Um, we shorten the length of the rail. This is the rail. And uh, we just make, make sure we've got it. And then I measure where the next flat is going to be on here. On here, say it's up here, like that. 
on then, uh, you can probably cut it off then if you want to, um, to the right to the right length. And I'll cut that off if you like to just show it. I mean, there's no real need. You, you guys know by now. But um, just push there. Don't, no weight. And. Uh, A nice block for the fire that goes in there. This is my wood fire up in there. And uh, so now you've got a rail to the right size. So you want to put that, put the flat there opposite the flat there. Okay, so you put that like that. Look at the flat above. Get the small axe now, shall we? Look at the flat above. Make sure that it's, it's level. So you got it level. And then commence put your flat here. Now a bit of advice with this, I might use it. When you go as far as that, you don't come finish completing the flat, go and put it to the two posts it's got to be against and try it because you will find very often that when you put it back up against the post there, then this one is cocked probably like that and it looks horrible because the posts are not, nothing is set, nothing is set when you're doing post and rail. So although I've completed that one and gone halfway, I haven't completed this one and gone halfway, but about only a quarter way through because if it was offset, if I can make an example of this now, if it was, yeah, this is one. if it was offset, you understand what I mean? Um, and it was sitting all right at the fireplace. It might be, instead of being like that, I hope you can see that, instead of being like that, it might be a little bit like that. So you've got a chance now of rectifying that before you complete to come to the halfway through the stick with your, when, when you put in the flat on. So if it's like that, then you've got the opportunity to say, ah, oh, we want to reduce the top of that slightly so what we do then is we go back to the block or wherever you are and then you put it on there and then you get the flat and then you turn it to what you know of the new angle and then you've got a chance then to bit of a knot there Now you know that that's right. You can then complete that. We can go a little bit deeper now. Let's just take that off. And so now you come to the flat now, but it's at the right angle because you give yourself that opportunity. You'd be surprised how often that happens. You get that flat and you think it's got to be flat on the same plane up the other end and then you go and make the complete flat up there and then when you go to put it on instead of being flat it's like that and then you, you, you've made a mistake and you can't do anything about that now because you've used up the wood haven't you so the main thing is to is to get that right and then when you've got it like that you can take it again up to the two posts that you put in the the rail on, this is the rail, you're putting the rail on, and you can set it up and have a look, and you've got a chance to do things about that, you know, you might want to uh, find that you've got to go further up the stick, and then you can come up here, because, because you find that, that that's that, and then you can cut off what you want with your saw when it's up, undusted, and you've, um, you've done the job, and it's drilled and painted and put on, then you've got your hand saw and you can saw it up against the post, just saw that off at a nice little angle and you'd be surprised how nice it looks. And you've got a nice little rail and then you put three rails down, go on to the next post. And you're making a post and rail fence that's very strong, will last a long time and all you've used 
is some five inch nails. Get very thin nails if you can, not these fat nails, it's agricultural nails. And or put screws in. Um, very often I do put screws in because it is easier. <laughs> so that's it. So I think that just about covers what we, you need to know about that. I mean there's things that I haven't told you, I can't tell you everything. I'm just guiding you and if you do that then you won't go far wrong. You can bring your chainsaw if you like. <laughs> But if you're doing a post and rail fence and you've got the right rails, bring the saw. You see now I use it. If it requires a chainsaw, don't hesitate. Bring it up there. And if you want to split it, bring the splitters and the mall to split off. Whatever. But only bring what you need. It's nice to be, look at this, half past six in the morning, Saturday morning. I'm doing this. I'm not interrupting anybody. If I was to start the chainsaw, one of my neighbors down the road would say, Oh, that man again has got his chain. I don't use the chainsaw but very little. I hear a lot more mowers going in the daytime than I do chainsaws at half past six in the morning. So, um, so I have a care for everybody. And as I say, um, generally speaking, I do use gloves. I did. I, oh, here's my gloves. And um, I just showed you without gloves because um, it it um, it's important to uh, you get a better grip with a glove. You get a better grip with the glove. You feel a bit safer with the glove. And if you happen to make a mistake, you might just bruise your hand. If you make a mistake and you haven't got a glove, you're down to the bone and you've got to go to the hospital and explain what you've done. So that's it. So that's as far as I can go with that. I don't think I can help you any further. You, that's enough information. As, as my dad used to say, I'll show you what to do. I'll show you once. And you'll, get, you'll, you, you'll work it out for yourself. You've got the basics. I'd save you all the time of finding out the basics and you can work the rest out for yourself. Okay, thank you very much. I'll add a little bit to this when I go back to the, to the workshop. So, there we are. I've put um, something on the video about, about uh, round wood, working with round woods, uh, post and rail. And I hope uh, that's come out well. It's... Uh, bit of habit of mind to get it all wrong but anyway it doesn't matter as long as you get the information across that's what matters so um, I hope that works out but I just come back to the workshop and I'll just add this to it stiff I guys can stick it on the end about um, <coughs> if you put the posts in you want to look out for a bar this is a bar this is actually a tine out of an old um, um, you used to row up hay with it and things like that and that's a bar put a point on it, something like that, and you push it in the ground, rattle it around and punch it in again, rattle it around, and then when you've got a nice hole, just drop your uh, post in, and then you want a mall, a mall. If you uh, can, get one out of wood, um, because it dam doesn't damage the posts, and they last for ages. This one looks antique, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks very antique, looks about 100 years old. Uh, but I made it myself about 15 years ago. Just went up the wood one day, short of a mall. Seen a bit of, uh, I think it was um, sycamore, sycamore knot, and um, and I um, got it. And uh, just um, looking at something over there. Somebody's coming, tracked out my attention. Somebody's coming. Um, sort of, I. Got it, drill the hole in it, blah blah blah. Got a piece of wood, drill the hole, knocked it in. That has knocked in dozens of posts, dozens of posts. And what I done, I got a piece of wood with a little bit of a bend on it, you see. So that when you're when you're putting the post in, it's high to start. You're knocking up here, aren't you? Because the post is high because you want to end up about here for a nice post and rail. So up here, so you can do that. Bang, bang, bang. Then when you come down, you know, you can really wallop it. And it doesn't damage the star and the wear, see? And it doesn't damage the post because you're using wood. And there's nothing there. There's not even a there's not even a nail in there. There's just a wedge to hold that in. And as I say, it's it's done dozens of posts, dozens and dozens over the last, over the last 15 years. And that's all you need for a post and rail. Is is um is a bar. A mall, two axes, a saw, hammer and some nails 
or your little sc uh, screwdriver. Uh, you know these electric ones; they're very good. I use it on my um, on my cradle. I put it on my cradle. If you don't know what a cradle is, have a look through my videos, and there'll be information on a cradle. And that's uh, and that's about it. So, having got back to the workshop, well, had dinner and that, settled down. Um, I thought I'd just introduce another little thing that uh, you would find on my other videos, on the, um, the towards the back end of the video, and people have got a very short attention span, so they sometimes they don't reach it, and that is to sharpen the axis. And you don't know, have to make a, good <coughs> a big deal about it. You know, it, it's quite simple. So um, I do use a diamond grit on that one just because I do. But this one, and they both cut, have you seen, equally well, so it doesn't make a lot of difference. I use an ordinary uh, sharpening stone like that one. That one will do. I look for the finest grit. And it's this one, the finest. Any, you, you find these in car boots uh, all over the country, these... Um, you know, you, you go to a, a sale or whatever, a machinery sale or whatever, and they're selling these. Um, people have discarded them in, in shops, you know, these second-hand shops and things. You buy them for 50p or 50 cents or whatever. And uh, they're very good. And that's what I use to sharpen my axes with. And I'll just, we'll just change around and I'll show you. I'm sharpening the little smaller of the axe. Uh, I brought it back and it wants a little bit of a clean-up. Not that it would make a lot of difference and it's there and what I do I use a jig what's called it what yeah it is the right connection anything that assists you mechanical device in what you're doing holding whatever is a jig and even that little piece of timber which I've formed is still a jig and I put it on there I allow about half an inch about 12 mil there because uh, that determines your angle if I go tighter it goes higher and therefore that angle increases it's about 12 degrees I, if, as I remember when it's about uh, 12 mil there so that's set up get your sharpness don't look for the fine one and uh, there it is there's the finer one of the two and all you do is put on there and then you just go fingers there thumb there finger there, the back end of the stone on there, so you've got it in four places, you've got the stone held. Put it on there, and then when you do that, if you're parallel with the bench, and you've used this jig before, at that angle, then it should sharpen it without any problem at all. So, what you do is you just keep it parallel with the bench, use all of the stone, otherwise you put a concave in the stone eventually, not that that's a big, any big deal, but it is. So you use all of the stone, and then you go across all of the blade of the thing. So that's it. And um, and then you do so much there's this side, like that. One, two, I always count three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you should see a change in colour here, and it hasn't quite reached the edge there, but it's pretty good all the way along, because so it's very close. So we turn it over. We come back to that, see, 10 mil there. We do this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, 10 isn't much, so we go another 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Have a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. You could do the shade more, so we just turn it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Over. Now the reason you turn it over is that if you if you kept going on one side, you'd have a sharp one side and not the other. And the other thing is, then you introduce a burr. Now when you cut in hard wood or or a two or three year old wood or more, you don't want the burr, you want a nice sharp edge. So in order to avoid the burr, you keep turning it regularly because all you're doing is, is turning the edge. When if I just keep grinding at that the edge would turn. So then if you do the other side it'll turn it back and any burr there will drop off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
this is due to, due to go back in the in the drawer now in a minute. I'll do it one year. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that will be alright. That's pretty darn good. It's as sharp it's as sharp as you need needs to be, and it doesn't involve a lot of work. The jig does the angle for you and this does the grinding for you and it's a nice and comfortable to use and if you do something you need 10, 20 to start and then to 10 to finish then you should get a nice uh, sharp blade good enough well you see me use both axes and we're both uh, working quite well so it just goes to show and that has been done with uh, um, a sandpaper 3000 grit which which is very sharp so but it cuts still the same so it doesn't make a lot of difference so that's it so I thought I'd introduce that so if you don't find anything on my videos but you you don't look at them far enough or then that will then uh, give you a guide as how to sharpen your axes so we'll put I'll introduce that as well thank you